Uh, all right, so let's get to DabbleCon. I imagine some of you might even be at DabbleCon or, or watching this weekend. Uh, I could not make it, unfortunately, but I was. Je- I texted Carl that I was jealous. It seemed like a hell of a time. Uh, they pulled off the live stream. I thought very well, better than I expected. There didn't seem to be any glitching or anything like that. Um, it all seemed very well done. I guess the one controversial thing is the porn bombing. Is that fair to say? How have people yeah. received that? Well, I don't know if it's controversial because of who it happened to. Right. Uh, everyone sort of despises who it happened to, so it's just yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. funny. Uh, but quick side note, you were uh, one of the best uh, punchlines in the Dr. Steve roast. Yes, uh, did, I agree. Did you hear that? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no, that made me it made me laugh because it I, was true, I, and also I know you. Hey, you said I, someone I know. <laughs> I messaged him and said that I was glad that no one told him I wouldn't be there. Because if you're watching, it's presented as like, Blind Mike is here. <laughs> no, I wasn't. But uh, luckily, Dr. Steve made a video ahead of time, and um, which is funny because I told Carl I couldn't make it, and I was like, I can send a video if you want, and he scoffed at that. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess you have a big star like Dr. Steve, and things change. Yeah, we we uh, don't got time for your video. Blind no, Mike, no, no, sorry. <laughs> That's but, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I was very, Dr. Steve was very, I, he might have been the best of the night. Dr. Steve, which is rare. That's tough for a video, well, like a pre-submitted video. That's tough for that to be uh, one of the better sets, but I think he pulled it off. He had a great Kumia joke, too, about uh, people are mad that Anthony Kumia is still alive. <laughs> uh, can I ask you to maybe do that set and record it, <laughs> and we'll just release it anyway? That would No. Be, I, come no. on, let's see you no. roast. That's like stand-up. I want to see you do stand-up. Oh, okay, maybe anyway, let's maybe next year. Show. Yeah, let's do it. We're almost to 1,000 uh, subs. Are we over 1,000 subs, members? Isn't that what you're going to do? Something exciting for your members? Oh, we thousand? did hit. Uh, well, so, oh, this is, I'll, I'll address this too, because this came up uh, on the road trip, someone asked. Um, what I remember is saying at 1,000 uh, subs, we play the Richard Ojeda drinking game, which I do want to do. Uh, but also people mentioned that I said a lot, uh, like we would do a live show. I don't know if I said that or not, but if I did, it didn't work because... I remember at the time thinking about it and no one subscribed. So I don't think anyone that subscribed in that time is really yearning for a live show. Pretty much the only people that mentioned it were people that like want to call me out on something. Um, But I do think we will do a live show for the final Quincy. I think that's my plan. We'll have other things involved as well. It won't just be Quincy related. But uh, when we get to the final Quincy, which should be uh, spring of 2025, I think... (laughs) Which is crazy, but uh, I do. I think that would be a good time to uh, to celebrate with the gearheads. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, I think I think what we definitely do owe is the Richard Ojeda drinking game, which uh, cool. is very fun. With Richard Ojeda, we're gonna do it with him. He's already said yes. Oh, he would do it. Yeah. He he. So yes, he he was going to do something for the goal, but he, I worry. Had, yeah. I gotta tell you though, I worry that might be less fun. <laughs> oh yeah, I get your point there. You know what I mean. <laughs> What if we just bring him on every once in a while to see how he thinks it's going? That <laughs> hey, could be interesting. You think of, you know, we'll talk about that. Spot we'll, checking. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll brainstorm on that. He's our yeah. Samantha Ponder, you know, on the sideline. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I don't know. Uh, stay tuned for all that. But let's get into DabbleCon, shall we? We shall. Um, yeah, so Friday night, they porn bombed Kevin Brennan, which I will say. So I don't. I, I looked at Reddit, and again... I'm focusing on like one guy complaining, uh, which you shouldn't do, but let's have a little fun with it. Some guys like people get so angry and that's what I don't understand. Like we make fun of people and make fun of podcasts all the time. That's what the show has become basically. Um, So I get making fun, but I think that's very important to focus on the words I'm saying, making fun. (laughs) Like, ultimately, and I always say this about Brendan Schaub and Tom Myers, like, we are fans of these guys in some twisted way. Like, I wouldn't want those guys to stop making content. Even Stuttering John, who I think is a scumbag. Like, I I don't, there's part of me that wants him to just go away forever. But there's also part of me that would be very sad because I'm a fan of watching him. And I think we add commentary that is fun and funny, hopefully. Um, And that's the point. What I never understand is people getting like fucking angry, like really pissed. Like there's a guy on Reddit who was like, 
they owe me an apology. And it doesn't seem like he's joking. He's like, they owe me an apology. Hearing the N-word and getting porn bombed on my own television? What if my neighbors think I'm yelling the N-word? <laughs> Which is such a crazy thing to have to type. I support Biden. Now my neighbors think I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Watch this at a lower volume, I guess. I don't know what to tell you. Um, I can see it be being jarring and weird. I don't really understand getting mad at it, which it's again, going back to the live show thing that I just said, it seemed like the only people complaining are people that wanted to have a problem with it. You know what I mean? And Absolutely. that's what I don't understand is like the anger. If you want to goof on the roast or, you know, make fun of the sets or whatever, I say, go to town, but like getting angry about it is very weird. And <laughs> well, YouTube's like a, the giant Yelp department. So when you do anything on YouTube, it's just all, you know, all you get is the complaints. <laughs> the yeah. good people just go on with their day. You know, so. But that's what's weird is I would assume those people would look at Yelp and be like, what an asshole. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you're looking at people on Yelp who are like, they fucking, they didn't have enough fucking waters in my hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> this place should burn to the ground. I would assume you'd look at that and be like, what an asshole. But that's what you're doing for all these podcasts. You're not having fun with it or goofing on it like you're actually getting angry which is a weird reaction to me and that leads us to kevin brennan and chad zumach where they had no fun with it and their job like their comics their job is to make fun of this stuff if you're gonna watch it but i guess kevin brennan live streamed it um live streamed the the roast and got porn bond that's really why they were doing it i think other people were live streaming it as well um but i think they were mainly doing it to fuck kevin brennan it's over it uh, well, yes. Yeah, so uh, they had hooked up with a good like pay-per-view place that actually yeah. had control of one stream. And so that place wanted, I'm sure, wants its part of the money. Right. And so they're going to do what they can to block that. And it's a rather ingenious way to do that, knowing the terms of service on YouTube and the people that would doing, be doing that on YouTube. Although there were streams still up after the porn bomb uh, with 1300 people watching. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, my, my logic is like, I wouldn't have wanted to watch Kevin Brennan watching that. Cause I think it really would have gotten in the way uh, for the purposes that I'm watching for. And also like, I think anyone that wants to watch it and support those guys was going to buy it anyways, even if they watch Kevin's live stream or whoever's live stream, like uh, Carl offered me a password to just watch it for free and I bought it because I was like, no, I'm supporting these guys. Like, what's the what's the point of me, you know, stealing it, essentially? Um, so I think most people that want to support it still would have. Um, so I don't think you have to go out of your way to porn bomb Kevin or anything. Like, I thought it was kind of funny that they did it. It didn't affect my that's again. This, I keep going back and again. I know it's one guy, but his Reddit post was so long. <laughs> <laughs> it's so angry and he was like uh, it ruined the entire experience for me and i was like it he goes he goes it happened the entire time and this is always my favorite but you can tell they're lying he goes it happened so often that i had to stop watching and then they still didn't stop doing it it's like but you just said you stopped watching how do you know they didn't stop doing it, it really it got like i noticed it it stood out but I didn't think it stepped on a ton of the jokes for me. Like I missed maybe two of Cardiff's jokes. That's really right. all I felt like I missed from them doing that. Right. Um, and you know, you're, you're part of the dabble verse. You enjoy the dabble, the dabble verse is the weird and gross things that the dabble verse that, that you love. And then, Oh my God, a dabble verse things happens. I don't like this. What? <laughs> that's exactly what you're here for. Isn't it? Uh, that well, that's the other thing is people is being like, people being like, I don't understand why they used that clip it's like oh well then you weren't really into this then it's, it's almost art if you think about it. it's like part of the show <laughs> right <laughs> this right. is the dabble verse this isn't some highfalutin thing you get on here you pay your 30 bucks you see a girl shitting that's what you do in the yeah. dabble verse <laughs> and and people could never do that like what i'm doing where it's like i don't think they needed to do that also it's not the end of the world that they did no you know no, people can't that. people can't do that online for some reason but I, uh i thought it was just the segment break hey <laughs> so we so we don't have kevin's actual reaction to it do we i've not seen that yet no that's disappeared from the planet <laughs> that's disappointing. did he freak out do we know how he reacted to it no he gets quiet 
Uh, so just in past things, like how it's been described is that he just gets quiet and he just starts clicking around because he's a boomer. That's probably so the gotta... smart way to play it, though, rather than <laughs> yeah. John, who would have had a, a classic reaction. <laughs> Jump backwards 10 feet. <laughs> yes, that's a uh, it's like he's never seen a naked body before. Yes, that's a weird reaction from a, a grown adult. So let's listen to. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's not Chad's. It's Kevin Brennan and uh, Carlos Danger in this clip, right? Yeah, and Chad's. The Mud Sharks. Oh, thing, okay. Uh, yeah. I like Carlos Danger. I don't think he's a big fan of mine, but I, I he like was on, him. I, I, he I was on your fun. show. He was on your show. He was. I don't know what happened. I I I, I like him, but uh, I don't I don't think he's a big fan of mine. For some well, I, I can tell you this: that I know that he had a show at the time that he was on your show, and he no longer does it because I guess of work stuff. So he just kind of disappeared altogether, pretty much, and just comes oh, okay. around from Kevin Brennan. I don't think he specifically has anything against you. I huh. on the ha- on the other hand hate this man. All right, let's go. <laughs> But right. it, he never gave me the Dabbleverse award, and now he goes around and tells everyone that I asked for the Dabbleverse. Yes, I asked for it, dickhead. I said you it asked for it? In a joking satire manner oh, on Twitter God. in front of everyone. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, that is not, that's more embarrassing than all of the things Craig has done. You know? <laughs> all, of the, all the terrible <laughs> things. Say what you want about Craig at Coney. He would never do that. Oh, fuck you. It's It's... <laughs> You know, the, the roast is too long already. Mike Morris, literally, I had to skip ahead five times, and he was still talking. I'm like, so what he's, just, fu- he's lying there, right? Yeah. yeah the it, he, the uh, roast is live. Yeah, the roast is uh, live through this whole part. Are you time <laughs> traveling, Kevin? How did you do that? Yeah, the his, the guests, guests are very confused by his life. Oh, how long did they tell him to do? And again, I paid for it so I can probably watch it when I'm done here. It's insanity. It's insanity. People are snoring. Well, They're insane playing. that it was too long. Every roast is too long. The Tom Brady roast will be considered the comedy event of the year if they give out such an award at the end of the year. That was definitely too long. That would be my one complaint about the Brady roast. It was probably too long. And that's why Comedy Central always edited those things down because in general, they're too long. But you don't know that till it's over. <laughs> You know, people are people are trying jokes out for the first time, essentially. My my takeaway from it was the guys that are not comics, I thought did the best. Actually, Anthony Zenhauer was was great. I thought he was very good. Um, But aside from him, like I thought the best of the night were Carl. Carl, you know what? I'd go as far as to say Carl was the best. No oh. reason I'm saying that. I, th- I thought he was aces, number one. Um, Cardiff, Tukey, um Trying to think of who, like, who really... Oh, and Dr. Steve. Yeah, Dr. Steve killed. Like, the guys who aren't comics were probably my favorite sets of the night. That, to me, is impressive. These guys don't do that for a living. And if you watched it, it seemed more or less like a roast. Now, again, going back to where you can't just be like... I didn't love this part. Like Tukey's Jake Hudson thing, I just don't get. I don't know the guy, and he spent a couple minutes on Jake Hudson. I have no interest in that. But that's not reason for me to be like, fuck Tukey. <laughs> this, yes, it, it, this motherfucker <laughs> talked about Jake Hudson, <laughs> and I don't get it. I want to understand things. Why don't you talk about things I get, Tukey? It was very niche, but his Jake Hudson material was excellent <laughs> well, yeah, and, and it's it's for the people that got it like i didn't understand it but i don't i don't know why you get so angry now if i goof on tukey being like this whole thing is about stuttering john you went up there and talked about jake hudson for five minutes <laughs> that that's different than being like oh this motherfucker and here's the thing is like whether i got his jake hudson jokes or not i think tukey might be the most like talented person there i think he's genuinely very funny like i think he's actually I'm curious if John does retire, I'd be curious to see what Tukey does because I, I would like to hear him talk about a lot more stuff outside of the devil verse. I think he's genuinely like a very funny guy. Welcome uh, aboard the Tukey train. Get out of this fucking devil verse. I've been on that for like a year with this guy. And also yeah. who brought him by the show and who, who introduced Tukey to the world? Blind Mike did. You were the first show he was on as a guest. Me? Yeah, you remember when uh, we had him do uh, Left on Red with Richard O'Hara? <laughs> Is that right? I didn't realize we were the first. No, we I launched it. it <laughs> <laughs> no, he may have been somewhere else first, but we he, early supporters, early yes. stock buyers in Tukey. No, I've always been a big Tukey Rocco bedabbler fan. I think he's very funny. Well, that, that that's ultimately my point is like, I find him very funny. There's part of his roast I didn't give a fuck about, but like, 
listen to Kevin where he's like, he's like, it's insanity. It's insanity. <laughs> Kevin, name something that's insane. That's the point of this. That's the skill to goofing on these people is bring something additive to the conversation. Oh, you you don't know his chat or his audience. <laughs> They're not looking for additive. In, enhance for... the conversation, Kevin. Don't is just it... go, guys, isn't this crazy? <laughs> They come to see what we're angry at today, Mike. What are we angry at today, Kevin? Let us know. All right, what are we angry at, Kev? Is it, it's going to be your brother again, isn't it? Playing music. And people watching at home are probably like, what? Right. What the fuck are we even doing? And again, the fact that I talked, surely open with jokes about my ass doctor. And that I, did, I talked about that like on Tuesday. So surely is like, I guess he watches every show I fucking do. Uh, somebody just said, wait, Kevin. what does it say? Kevin, what are you doing right now? <laughs> Literally progress. right fucking now. <laughs> what are you do- that? You want to talk insanity, Kevin, you are scolding and berating Shuli for talking about you and watching everything you do while you're watching Shuli and reacting to him. <laughs> That's like, you want to talk about insanity. That's clinically ins- that's schizophrenic kevin what you're doing <laughs> that is clinical you should be institutionalized because that, that i i actually am worried about you now that you don't see the hypocrisy in what's happening where you're like can you believe this guy watches me and talks about it what do you think all of this is kevin you you paid for a live stream so you could watch with your friends hey yeah, I don't. Spy I don't report. have to. I don't Spy have report. to watch it anymore. I mean, I'm. I'm kind of. Uh, it's just getting so weird. You don't have to watch it anymore. You got to the end. Surely went last. <laughs> uh, the credits are over, Mike. He doesn't have to watch anymore. Yeah, right. That's like you see. You see the final scene. You see Samuel L. Jackson come in after the credits <laughs> in a Marvel movie, and you know, you're like, you know what? I'm done with this horse shit. <laughs> well, good news. <laughs> I'm sure I'll figure it out by the beginning of the first next movie. Uh, I don't need to see this nonsense. Porn bomb. They play. I'm their done. Shoot. I'm never. You know what? Now that it's over, I'm never watching this roast again. Yeah. Again, Kevin, you want to talk insanity. It would be so much crazier if you kept watching it. <laughs> Let's watch it again. Please on the screen for a long time. Be ready with the dumb. No, I be ready with the dumb. I don't have to. I don't have to watch it anymore. I, I've got to. These guys are so. And again, the jokes are getting less funny because, I mean, Kumi is not going to do well. Shuli's not going to do well. The, the roast is too long. Mike Moore is basically. Wait, 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 I'm, I'm, very, I'm very confused. <laughs> when is this taken from? Because he's talking about Shuli's jokes, and then he's like, Shuli's not going to do well. I think he just he. He's flailing is my best answer to that. Like, is he having like some sort of, <laughs> is he suffering from some kind of dementia? I don't know, but this uh, must be uh, taken out of context or something like this must be clipped weird because he's literally talking about the joke. Shuli opens with, and then is like, you know, guys, I'm going to stop watching at the end of this thing. Cause I don't think Shuli's going to do well. <laughs> well, shout out to my lost interest. One of the great clippers out there, which I, I'm sure he's telling the story here. Yes. Like thank a, you. Boom. My lost interest who makes it much easier for me. It's, it's like, <laughs> I, I would never sit through all of Kevin Brennan. Yeah. This guy needs a mansion. Hey, all these clippers need a ma- mansion ASAP. They make the job so much easier for everyone. Well, what I wonder about with Kevin Brennan, speaking of money is like, he seems like such a miserable guy that doesn't do anything. Like he's at the end of his life, essentially. What does he want? Like, why, why does he want all this money? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what would he do with it? He should be content. Why is he so bitter about not having more money? He makes the living that he makes. He lives a seemingly boring life. Like, mm-hmm. why is he so bitter about people that have more money than him? He does fine. Well, do you ever remember Howard Stern talking about Bill O'Reilly? And how he came to success late. He like struggled to all these stations, went around for everywhere. So Kevin Brennan, struggling musician for decades, right? Finally gets a job at a big station, Bill O'Reilly. It finally gets millions of billions of dollars, Bill O'Reilly. And what does he want to do? He wants to sell you a cup with his name on it because there's not enough money. He, He didn't, he's not satiated by the success he has. He only remembers the struggle. And so I'm going to sell you Frisbees, cups, napkins, yeah, yeah. doilies, everything with my name on it and likeness. That's the Kevin. That's this attitude. Kevin Brennan 
is it has he doesn't he does he it's imposter syndrome i'm calling it he doesn't believe that he deserves the success that he has and so you're hearing him argue it out with his id and his ego and his brain right and I, my thing whether you found it to be the funniest thing in the world or you you didn't <laughs> like my thing watching it was like oh they pulled it off you know what i mean like it seemed like a legitimate roast that involved a lot of people who aren't comics or aren't professional comedians like that to me was pretty impressive like i thought the worst of the night was probably the guy who's been doing the longest not really shitting on him even like i thought bob levy had lesser laughs than like cardiff or tukey you know so that to me was most impressive but like again even if you thought it sucked why are you angry about it kevin (laughs) No, he's angry about most things. Right, and I then Tukey did like at least wow. minutes. God damn you, Morse. They don't got to put shit on the screen to stop people from clipping. Just put up fucking Mike Morse's act. No, Chad's watching a roast going like, uh, you at least like Carlos Danger is making a joke. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he's trying to add something to the conversation here. He's, he's continuing just, the like, roast. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Kevin's like, no, fuck this, Rose. They all die. <laughs> Carlos, no time for jokes. I'm no. angry. And you notice who hasn't made one joke in this whole clip? The stand-up comedian on the bottom there. <laughs> Wake up, Chad. The mud shark. Yeah. <laughs> Keeps, talking over, Keeps talking over the jokes. It's a total cock block. My question is, why scat point? Why not just regular tits and ass, truly the mind of it? No, because they knew it took down Stutter and John's channel. That's That's... That's why I know uh, Melton's involved, and that's why I know T. Uh, Ian, was it T. Ian Hawk is involved? Yeah, because they know that worked. No they know that. About now. He, yeah, now he's getting deep into the he's weeds. Completely of... lost me. Well, I mean, why? The answer is it, it was a Stuttering John related thing. It was a festival around Stuttering John, and they used a Stuttering John clip. I think that's pretty obvious why they chose that. Yeah, that's a I- ignorance or just trying to bait his audience into being ignorant. You know, they love being ignorant over there. I, I sit I, no, they, they jerk <laughs> off the shit. That's why. <laughs> is it, this is what they jerk off to. Have you ever seen them get memberships? They just jerk off invisible people. <laughs> they worked on Stutter and John, so that's why they're doing it. I paid. It's 30 bucks. I'm not going to do it in the middle of a show to 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 uh, to uh, suffice a girl a uh, dollar ninety nine super chat. I don't I don't play that way. Uh, this is like watching Porky's That's in the good. theater, and every time a girl's about to take her clothes off, the protectionist skips and <laughs> screaming get to the ground. It's so weird, man. They went right. through all this trouble. Feels very dirty. So you think the whole thing was a ruse, Carlos Danger, to, to take my channel down? Yeah. I mean, at this point, boy, Kevin, I you're can't. very perceptive. <laughs> No, you know what? I think they thought the most entertaining thing would be to randomly insert clips of the N word and someone shitting. I'm sure. Just completely at random. I they, and then they were afterwards. They were like, "Oh shit, Kevin was watching." Oops. Right in the middle of someone doing stand up. <laughs> they did the. Come on. Do you, do you think is Kevin retarded? Like, is he? Because because the way he talks has always seemed a little like slow to me. He seems like mentally he's not all there. Is he mentally challenged? I think I'm going to, I'm going to say that he, this is pretty much a full act. Kevin. Yeah. Brennan he's is, just pretending it, not to know. He's a thespian Kevin Brennan, because there is no way. Cause when he goes after people, I don't like, He's very on target, right? Cause I see it. I see his sights from his point of view. And I I've, I've heard too. Kevin be funny. Right. For so, sure. I, so but have you ever heard stuttering john no so if you're not funny you're not funny kevin is kind of funny right but his his sort of reality i think is shaped by that thing i was talking about lots of failures and then some success so now he's just warped doesn't know how to handle success doesn't believe he earns it and just takes it out on everyone imagine like well after the fact coming to the realization of like you know i think they might have played the (laughs) n-word because of the people illegally streaming it huh now call me crazy. Listen, I know there's a lot of radical ideas out there, but I think they might have done it to thwart people who were illegally streaming it. This just dawned on me. Ah, the Dabbleverse just makes its own content. I mean, the the show to thank the Dabbleverse for its year of content created a half a year of content. <laughs> this fucking thing. It's out of control. Somebody needs to put it down. And I can't rule anything out. Wow. 
Scanning ahead. Another scat point. Oh, these are so. These guys are so sad. Uh, it's a. It is. <laughs> this is the man who's cautiously scrolling through the roast. <laughs> now this is sad. Now hold on. Let me make sure I don't get porn bombed. Let me. So I, oh, is that, so is I that can an watch asshole? their event. Is, no, that looks like a shitting asshole. Okay, no, that's just that's just a, a comic. Oh god, it looked like a shitting guy. I've seen shitting hole assholes everywhere. <laughs> it's insanity. Uh, uh, we're 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 basically caught up. It's been an incredible day. But Carlos, uh, uh, <laughs> do your Jerry Springer day. final not final thoughts, but what's your take on like again again? I know you're a little. Well, if it's biased, not final but... thoughts. What do you want to do? Just do a Jerry Springer impression, Kevin. What are you asking for? <laughs> Why invoke Jerry Springer if it's not his final thoughts? Uh, give us some sanity, Carlos, please. <laughs> You're here. But but the fact that they went to so much trouble. No, when me and Chad did it with... Uh, was with it, uh, is it, Casey, you can in, enlighten me on this. Try. It's pretty much just one guy in the back hitting play a few times, right? Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. was okay. like, the, very simple It setup. wasn't a tremendous amount of trouble, you don't think? Uh, they uploaded it, and that was pretty much it. <laughs> you don't think after they played the N-word clip, they were... Ripping off their jerseys in the locker room <laughs> in a heap of sweat. Like, oh, oh my God. We, we lost I don't know two how guys. We, did it. <laughs> we lost two guys on that one. We porn bombed Kevin Brennan, but was it worth it? Let's, we got to send a letter to the families. <laughs> so much trouble. Melton and Hack Mania. They're, they didn't do any of this. So I. Yes, there was Saving Private Ryan and then this. Those were the two <laughs> things in order that were a lot of trouble for a very little thing. <laughs> I suspected they would do something, you know, because they, they have not, Boy, you know, Joe's guy, whole... Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't suspect it enough to, you know, put a little delay on you. When, know, I, video when I announced publicly that I was going to live stream their paywall event, I suspected they might not want me doing that. Yeah. In real time. In real time. I wasn't Guys, even going to give it a two-second delay. Nope. Not a lot get past old KB. I thought maybe <laughs> they would be up to some hijinks. Uh, when I think KB, I think Tech Maven. The whole thing is Joe's a loser. Producer Joe's a loser. So he'll try. He'll be like, ah, what I did was I what I did. So, so, but I, so oh, I was God, ready I for it. say that. You got him, Joe. Joe, the producer, very nice man, and you got him, Joe. <laughs> that guy, he's going to be, this is exactly what he's going to be like. What I did was what I did. Oh, oh, I can't wait till that smug bastard is brought to his knees and has to say that. But especially when Shuley told me, me and John, to definitely, because Chad thought me, John, and him sniping it together would be gold, and it would have been, probably, but... I don't trust John. John's always a peek behind the curtain. Yeah, that's uh, uh, yeah. We don't want to see how Oz was created necessarily. Sometimes headache to deal with. He always wants like uh, all the money, right? And so, so I was just like, so. But the fact that Chili was like, yeah, go ahead and do it, because again, Chili's so obvious. He's always got the most obvious take. Just like when they bought me the super chats that day. I mean, not the super chats. Bought me the live views, and Bob's like, yeah, Kevin's gonna have a lot of live viewers today. I bet he gets a bump up. And uh, there's such hacks. Go ahead, Carlos Danger. Yes. Unlike, well, unlike this insightful commentary that you've provided, <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> so, I think, wow, that's, that's really a comic genius at work. So far, he's pretty much repeated what happened. <laughs> there's no, he's added nothing to this here. Now, I, I would probably, to some degree, enjoy, if they just goofed on the roast, like, that would be funny. Who get, but to go on and complain, Carlos tried, Carlos tried. <laughs> that, and that's why I like Carlos danger is like, he's trying to goof on it, which by all means, it, it, maybe it wouldn't be for me. Cause I like a lot of those guys, but like fucking go for it, man. Who cares? It's what I say about anyone that's goofed on this channel where I'm like, yeah, it's not going to be for everyone. <laughs> so I it's, it would be completely hypocritical for me to take a break from mocking GD Fenderson. to say, you know, guys, <laughs> I, I, that aside, I think the people that goof on me are really over the line. That's yeah. that's too far. <laughs> but Kevin is just this. He's like, can you fucking believe Shuli? No, we can't believe him, Kevin. Tell us something. Tell us something about Shuli that we can laugh at, please. Yeah, there's a, a saying in uh, a football, college football back next week. Can't wait, baby. Uh, but there's a saying that steel sharpens steel. Like you want to be. Uh, picked on by the best so you can learn how to respond the best and then they can respond to you. It's like this elevation of your talent. Steel sharp and steel. These are like, no, give me the softest fucking diaper around my face because I can't handle it. 
It, well, it were we'll we'll get to this later in the show for a certain someone. The problem is it works for Kevin. Like, I I don't particularly get it, but Kevin obviously has some kind of charm to him where he has fans and people like him. Like people like that show. The real damage that it's done is that people see Kevin just turn on his camera, do no show prep, yell for two hours, and make money, and they think they can also do that. That's that's the real damage it's done to the internet. Where now, I mean, that's what Stuttering John does. Same thing. Uh, yeah, but, he he ripped off Kevin's whole thing. Stuttering John it turned into Kevin. It was yeah. Weird. So now you just have people that are like, you know, maybe I can just be completely lazy and thoughtless and, oh, have, and turn on it. That doesn't work for everyone. I think it probably has diminishing returns for Kevin even. But at least Kevin, like we said, is funny at times and is kind of unique in the sense that like. I think it's a an idea that doesn't have a ton of legs, but like he was one of the first to do that. Just turn on his camera and bitch and just get money from it. <laughs> like that's not going to work for everyone. And that's the real damage that it's done is people like someone we'll talk about later. Who's like, maybe I, I have a camera. Maybe I can do that. Yeah. Uh, not everyone can be stern. Be yourself. Right. When you stream snipe Melton's thing, Hackamania, that was hilarious. I mean, it was great. To, it, 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 I, I watched both, you know? Mm -hmm. So just because you sniped one, I, again, I don't think you're taking money out of anybody's pocket. Right. So I guess it is just to fuck with you. I love it. He, Mike, you miss it. He takes pictures of a $2 super. He takes pictures. Yeah, why does he do that? It's been explained to me, but I still don't understand. <laughs> okay, from what I can understand, and I watch this goddamn show, I still don't understand. Uh, he does that so he can shout them out at the end of the day. And then also he it literally has like a database that he keeps in an old man notebook. Like, so he has, so when Kevin Brennan passes, whoever his family is going to come in there and find his <laughs> notebooks of super chats from 20, 20, like 20 years ago. It's going to be very funny. But yes, so he, he does it for like a scrapbook, essentially. Well, here's the thing. And I got to agree with Kevin on this. YouTube is shit at giving you like the analytic numbers in a financial way that is helpful. Like you can dig and find numbers that are approximate or close to. But it doesn't, it, it's not like, here's your invoice, here's what you made per show, so here's what you can pay out per people. Like, so you actually have to keep an intricate record of it, but he does it with his cell phone, and that's funny to me. Very interesting. But yeah, I just, agree with, I agree with Carlos's point here. Like, Carlos, again, we're watching him add something to the conversation. He has an opinion, a take. He's like, listen, I don't think uh, anyone that's watching Kevin's stream would have otherwise paid for the, I, I more or less agree with carlos there i don't think you're watching kevin's version of it because i think kevin's commentary would get in the way if you actually wanted to enjoy the roast so carlos is doing his best to have a conversation here chad zumak by the way hasn't spoken is he alive <laughs> he is alive but uh, they clip interesting things mike that's what they do in these cl clips oh, that's right. that's why chad's <laughs> he's often out. left out yes yeah. he's, <laughs> he's often just the guy sitting there not saying anything but uh, if Melton allowed Hackamania to go through, maybe he's not behind the Shuli thing. Maybe it's more of a Shuli camp, Joe the producer sending out that scab. Right, but Melton's maybe, not, Melton's but, not but, and on the rose. But you're right. I agree. Melton's not on the rose. So he's probably there, but, but what is he doing? So is so he helping? They think Melton, Melton wasn't... He was on WATP yesterday for about five minutes. They think Melton is running this thing? Uh, they think Melton runs everything. It's not his <laughs> event. It, him he's and, just there. Him and T and Hawk. <laughs> yes. Call him T and Hawk. It's, all, it's also. I don't think Looney Tunes critic is behind it either. Right? There's, there's people there that, that aren't necessarily running the live stream. <laughs> They're just seeing ghosts everywhere. These fuckers. <laughs> Joe, to to because again, Ian Hawk, Ian Melton was the one. This clip that they're using. <laughs> he's doing it. Ian has called me an R word and a murderer and a woke leftist online. I still like him. Like I don't mention him. I don't think about it. I don't know who that is. I don't know who that is. Uh, he's, he was a uh, 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 Onions main mod for his ah. Discord for a while. He, he's sort of everyone looks at him as like Onions henchman, even though so they Onions think says he's. No. Behind this, a moderator <laughs> yeah. of Nobody Likes Onions? That's what I'm saying. But I don't even think he does that anymore. Like, that's what I'm saying. They're seeing ghosts. They're just saying They names. have nightmares about Patrick Milton? <laughs> what, what, what's happening? No, a lot of people. Joey C has the same thing with the Ian Hawk dude. They have nightmares about this guy who they just. It's it's kind of like Kaiser Sose. They've imagined something that doesn't really exist, and now it exists in their. It's a boogeyman. <laughs> it's good, a, for, good for Milton that he's been able to do to other people what Red Bar did to him, basically. 
you learn. Know what I mean? like, <laughs> you learn. Will Chamberlain said you learn more by losing than you do by winning. You yeah. learn by losing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. Trust me. I've lost a lot, Mike. I've learned some things. <laughs> Damn the shit. He's they doing the paper on, on the No, scaffold. that was the one that took Stutter and John down, and that was Melton sending it out to all his people, and it was basically Ian Hawk. So, so <laughs> I think they're in cahoots. <laughs> is, is, <laughs> Ian Hawk. <laughs> This man, he's like a criminal legend, a mastermind. He also... In Vulture. This guy's circling around us, just uh, waiting for dead bodies. And uh, he's sort of circled back around. He was the one that got... J- oh, I'm just saying, allegedly, the rumor out there is he's the one that got Jake Hudson's channel taken down. So I, I don't care about any of this. I just... <laughs> That's why I said I, I just know that Ian Hawk, I'm sure, is an innocent man. <laughs> he's just sitting there I drinking a beer like, what did I do? <laughs> I can't imagine why poor Ian Hawk, whoever... Hey, whoever he is, <laughs> is getting blamed for a porn tape being played at Dabblecon. <laughs> but I, yeah, you're probably right that that Shuli was probably like, let's take let's take anybody sniping down, and uh, the fact that people paid and yes, they got a obviously. <laughs> Kevin, <laughs> what, what is it? Kevin's like, you know, I think I've cracked the case. <laughs> He's so jealous he wanted to do this. He's like, ah, oh, they got it in. I want no to do something. No shit, like Kevin. <laughs> it's like if you. I was watching Kevin's show and I was like, wait a second, hold the phone. I think this guy is just trying to collect enough super chats to pay his bills. <laughs> I, you know what? I think I'm on to something. Guys, let's investigate. Carlos Danger, Chad, get on it. Quick. Because yeah, as we know, uh, if you super chat, now we control what you spend it on. That's the new rule. Yes, that's right. That's why no super chats are allowed today. So just <laughs> no. Keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah. We didn't get to tell you what to do with the gold money, so no more for you, Mike. Right. This shit is is right. is insanity. This shit's insanity. That's how that went. <laughs> it really is. It really is insanity, Kevin. My mind was. Bl- I was like, I, I felt like I was in a rubber room. I was like, I can't. What? A, why are they doing this? <laughs> it can't be to fuck with Kevin Brennan. There must be more to it. Oh, I actually geez. give credit to Kevin for not having the ego to think it was about him, even when it clearly was. <laughs> I think they're doing this because people are streaming. Kevin, I think they said it on the roast. I think Vinny Paulino walked out and goes, we just got Kevin. Yeah, I mean, uh, listen, we all knew, everyone sort of knew something like that was coming. And so just to fucking give yourself 10 seconds back time have someone watching it and they were like, Oh, there's some poop. You should probably want to stop your stream. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It is funny. Like, you know, and I, I probably wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't want to play that on a show I was doing necessarily. But again, going back to the, those comments on Reddit, people were like, you know, they could have just played a Disney music or something. And it's like, really like this free speech crowd. <laughs> It's always like, fuck censorship, man. It's like, you know, you really put a, should have played something from Cinderella <laughs> yes. instead of instead of naughty words. Here's how you should have censored their speech instead. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Blind Mike, I, I hate to say this. This is going to make you really sad. What? Uh, but but we, have a co- we have a couple super chats. No, they're not allowed. Uh, just as a few. They're listening to us. Trust me. Uh, but uh, and when you and DJ Electra joins us. Hey, DJ Electra. How are you? Hello, Hello I'm good. How are you guys? Thank you for joining. I'm here and I'm wearing white pants. Ooh. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We know what that means, guys. Very interesting. (laughs) Uh, You don't know what that means, Mike? I said very intriguing. Yes. When women wear white pants, that means uh, it's a visitor time. All right. Uh, Are you ready, DJ Electric? I thought it was because you guys said it was wedding season. Oh, yes. That's why. Sure. (laughs) Uh, All right. Here you go. Uh, First one, DJ Electric. Manny Muskets for $5. Bring Ojeda for the whole drinking game. Either way, it makes for a better story long term. Mm-hmm. It could mm-hmm. be interesting. I just wonder, would we have as much fun? The, well, put it this way. We would drink when certain crutch terms are used. Would that yes. be fun yeah. if the guy is sitting there with us? Yes. If it happens after yeah. November. <laughs> then it, Before and, November, no. And <laughs> by the, by the way, uh, I shouldn't even be responding to these dastardly <laughs> wrongdoers. <laughs> I just want to see who who has betrayed me by sending super chats. Well, well, he, this one didn't betray you. I think you're going to accept this one. So go mm. ahead. I don't know. Carlos Danger for ten dollars. I like you, Blind Mike, though oh, okay. I'm 24 minutes behind. 
<laughs> so that right. might change, is what he's saying there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've said only nice things. I, I, maybe I misread something. I, I saw a tweet of his or something, I thought, where he was not a fan. But maybe I misunderstood. So I'm glad it's not Carlos po- is on my side. It's not possible, Mike. Everyone's your fan. So. Well, Carlos isn't that much of a fan, because he doesn't realize, no super chats allowed, you son of a bitch. <laughs> well, I guess, yeah. Uh, thank you, DJ Electrify. Uh, we'll see you in a little bit. Uh, all right, Mike, you ready to go to uh, DevilCon? Yeah, so let's st- let's stay in, in uh, focused on DabbleCon because, um, unlike Kevin, someone tried to make some content out of this. <laughs> so you know, and this makes me maybe I I'd prefer Kevin's way. I think of just boringly bitching about things because this is a guy who actually tried something creative and just bombed. <laughs> Do you know this guy? Have you ever heard of Jimmy Grundle? Before? Oh no, I don't. I don't know Jimmy Grundle or whatever his name is. <laughs> Jimmy Grundle. Well, that's his new name. Uh, so get rid of Grindle. Grindle. It's now Grundle. Oh, Jimmy Grindle. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, that actually, why it wasn't on purpose. <laughs> Jimmy Grundle. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. All right. So yes, we have uh, Jim Grindle perfor- uh, coming at you live from uh, DabbleCon. Who is he? At- Should I know him? So he was a guy that used to be early, uh, uh, like in hot water shows, uh, early compound. Okay. Uh, then he was sort of run out of there, uh, and he kind of hangs on the periphery of stuff and shows up uh, from time to time. But he has a real deep voice and an interesting perspective, so I don't hate the guy, uh, like all broadcasters. But uh, here he is reporting back to Rob Saul on the happenings of, of Yeah, so that. Rob Saul has an idea, and he says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to infiltrate DabbleCon. <laughs> yes, I will send the Saul army <laughs> into, into behind enemy lines into DabbleCon, and I will ruin the event for all of them. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't really work. So it's more like. <laughs> but yeah, oh, okay. close. We're gonna get. We, we have a lot more Rob Saul coverage <laughs> that Fucking we'll get to later. But first, I want to see what hijinks he's up to at DabbleCon. When you sent me the Rob Saul stuff to edit. I never have been more in love with you, Mike. I was like, we are on the same page on this one. This is like finding he, out you love The Office. He is poison. He is <laughs> legit, he's podcasting poison. I said this about DG. I can't tell who's worse because at least DG was completely boring and like made you want to fall asleep. Rob Saul makes you viscerally angry. So I, I guess in terms of podcasting, Rob Saul is getting a reaction out of you yes. where DJ was just the equivalent of just holding a sneaker up to the camera. It was just yeah. absolutely nothing. Whereas Rob Saul, you're repulsed by. So it's I guess just, in terms of getting a reaction, Rob Saul is better, but I, I, it's tough. I, it's a hate listen. It's, it's a hate listen. It's really tough. <laughs> and the worst is that he's completely, he's a jellyfish. He's completely spineless. Like that's what I thought, given his attitude and he has some anger to him. I thought maybe he was a little cynical, but then when you hear him with John, he's just putty. And I don't know if that's a bit, if he's playing John for the, you know, doing some long play with him or something, but he's just a completely you know, flaccid man on John Melendez's <laughs> show. Um, but let's see, he gets into some shenanigans here at DabbleCon. Yeah, this one's called Tukey. Oh yeah, so he, ta- he talks to the, the aforementioned uh, Tukey, my friend Rocco is outside DabbleCon and just watch how Jimmy Grundle gets to him. Oh, does he does he penetrate the almighty Tukey? Finally, <laughs> this cocksucker is taken down a few pegs. Uh, Jimmy Grundle. That's going on his tombstone. Else, let's find some more of these great uh DabbleCon. Uh, uh, I saw I see another one we haven't spoken to yet. Okay. Another one of the big celebrity people. He has a puppet on his hand, so Obviously, he wants to. Excuse me. Oh, yeah, sure. You're live on the Rob Saul show. Can you tell him stuff? Hi, Rob. You stink. Uh, <laughs> now, how did how did Rob think this was going to go? Like Tukey would just be like, "Oh God, one of Rob Saul's goons is here," and just piss himself. <laughs> like, what did he think would happen? What was Rob Saul hoping would happen? That everyone would go, "Oh, Rob Saul." You're not Ian Hawk, all right, pal? <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't invoke the fear that Ian Hawk does. Uh, look you at that. That. You're you stuff. Who, are, who are you wearing today? Who am I wearing? 
Yes, we're, we're doing a screen uh, shag carpet. Okay, all right, because we're doing it. We're we're not, we're not really here to. What uh, breed of dog are you f-ing today? Nah. <laughs> <Hey>, uh. <laughs> like any any time any kind you got. What was he expecting? Like, what did he think would happen that they wouldn't make fun of him? Uh, I think that he's. Uh, you can't see it, Mike, but in his description of his name is Dabbleverse villain. So he's embr- he's embracing the role of uh, Rob yeah. Saul. He's he's literally ta- these people learn from Stut Joe, uh, and here's the thing about Rob Saul. And we'll talk about it later. He wanted to be like a broadcaster, like a normal broadcaster, probably like you, probably like you know, like a sure. good broadcaster. Sure, Some sure. people just can't lift that weight up the hill, but they still want to do this. And so they see they they see Stuttering John, and see they see Kevin Brennan. They see those hate comments, and th- there's a lane. And they're he seeing saw Stuttering the John and saying, "Hey, he can't do this either. Maybe I can <laughs> exactly. learn from him." <laughs> yeah, but money comes in. Right. And, and I just have a night job where I'm a bartender, and this would be fun during the day. And no woman likes me, and my dog's the only one that pays attention to me. Let's no, do it. But you're thinking, here's the problem. You're thinking macro. I'm asking micro. Okay. In this moment, okay. <laughs> what was Rob Saul <laughs> hoping to accomplish with Jimmy Jimmy Grindle? Yes, yeah, that's, that's, I like Grundle better, but yes. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't being cute, actually, the first time. Oh, yes, his <laughs> name is Jim Grindle, but yes. Jim, Jim Gr- what an obnoxious name. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's his okay, real well, name. So what were, what were Rob and Jim Grindle hoping to accomplish? Like, so, so Jim's there on site, and he puts a microphone in your face, and he's like, you're talking to Rob Saul. What was the reaction like they were anticipating? Well, I don't think Rob ever thought that anyone would ever pay attention to him. So I don't think anticipation. He didn't think that far ahead. No, he's like, listen to his questions. What are you wearing? (laughs) Yeah, he had had nothing. (laughs) nothing. And Tukey, again, I think Tukey's very funny. Like, he's very quick and just immediately knows how to respond to this asshole in a way that makes him uncomfortable. So, really, like, Rob Saul is the one that's getting goofed on here. (laughs) On his own show, just getting lambasted. The roast continues. Sorry, Kevin. (laughs) <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, no, Guy back here said you stuck <laughs> with your fire hole. Yes. All right. Well, uh, uh, thank you uh, for coming. He's to just. Team. He's like, okay. Well, this didn't go as I was hoping. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, uh, Tuki and Rock. Dabbler and uh, Tuki. We're just trying to get some yeah. uh, fashion going. They, they also didn't like you. Man. I just. <laughs> <laughs> they also didn't. Like you. Uh, poor Jim Grindle. He's like, ah, no one here. <laughs> Rob, you'll be surprised to find out. No one here really gives a fuck about you. <laughs> the irony that Jim Grindle, Grindle is like in the same stratus. They're in the same place. So I actually appreciate that Grindle is like using him as a shield to run through the Dabbleverse and make another attempt. <laughs> yeah. I, I, here's my thought. Fu- I'm thinking of this on the fly as we go here. I guess Rob Saul is in podcasting terms above dg because he's invoking a reaction like people hate rob saul whereas dg was just podcasting cyanide it was horrendous to, whereas rob saul like ev- ev- evokes some emotion where you viscerally hate rob saul dg was just an immediate tune out so that that's something i guess do you find that you listen to things you hate equally to things you like blind mike um Sometimes, but here's the thing. If Rob Saul is on John's show, I'll turn it off. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Like, I, I do hate Rob Saul, but not in the, the Howard Stern way, where it's like the people that hate you listen more than the people that love you. Rob Saul, to me, is a tune out. I'm sure for some people, they're like, and, and now, like, I watched his solo show to see what it was about, and we have some clips for later. So, like, in terms of that, I guess I will continue watching, but it's tough. Like watching John to me at times is a treat because he's a buffoon. I like to laugh at him, but it is entertainment for all intents and purposes. Rob Saul is just a complete tune out to me. Like uh, on the road trip, the Dakota trip, Justin put on uh, Stuttering John's show and Rob Saul popped in. And I was kind of like, oh. Let's just turn it off. Like I, I didn't want to keep listening to it because a Rob Saul episode is so much worse than just John on his own. Yeah, while you're saying that, that makes a good point. Uh, if you, how I would define them separately is if you can sit someone down who's never heard the show and just have them watch it and be like, "This is this guy sucks," but it's entertaining as hell. That's stuttering John. If you put someone you didn't know in front of Rob Saul, they are going to hate you. 
<laughs> right. So yes, that's that's the fundamental difference. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Give you credit because I would never go out that th these people hate me out there, and, and you're out there. This one's called backfiring, by the way. <laughs> this is where you see just a brilliant idea at work. This is where you get to see <laughs> the mind of Rob Saul and Jimmy Grindle working together as <laughs> as one unit and everything just firing on all cylinders. It's, we got a master blaster situation going on. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, representing <laughs> Rob Saul. And I got to give you credit, Jim Grindle, you have a set of balls, my friend. Rob Saul, uh, why do. wouldn't you go? What would they... Dude, they're not beating up Jim Grindle. Like, what would they do? Go, hey, you fuck dogs. John could have showed up. Like, yes, <laughs> he should have shown up. I, I, that's the thing. At this point, maybe there's too much ill will towards John. But I always use this example uh, when I was at Skankfest this year. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe a couple years ago. Um, but one year when I was at Skankfest, uh, they it's the Dave Smith, Big J, and Lewis on stage, and they're about to bring out a guest. And Dave Smith goes, well, "Guys, like I, this is a controversial figure, uh, but please have an open mind. Give her a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, Amy Schumer." And the place <laughs> went fucking bananas. And the joke was Tim Dillon walked out. So that like it wasn't Amy Schumer, obviously, but for that three seconds that everyone there thought it was Amy Schumer, who they've all hated over the years and trashed and uh, think she's a joke thief and all this kind of shit. That three seconds when they thought it was Amy Schumer, they were like, hey, you know what? Good for you for showing up like and that moment to me has always stood out because I'm like, oh, as much as people shit on you online and have an opinion of you. If you play along and show that there's more to you than meets the eye, that you're willing to goof around a little bit, that goes not just a long way. Like, I can't explain how long that goes for you. Where, like, if John showed up there in good humor and roasted, if John showed up at the roast and told jokes about himself and then everyone else, I think he would have gotten a standing ovation. <laughs> Well, that, okay, yeah. So what I call that, that's the Rudy ending. And it will never happen with John, but I always think about it, like on these yeah. particular things. Like if he would have got on that stage, not only joked on himself, but pulled out the lawsuit and said, here's the lawsuit. I'm suing you, Carl. I'm suing you, Shuli. And then he ripped it up in front of everyone. And he says, I'm in now. Like the place would have erupted. The, the building would have exploded. Like there's a pent up emotion in everyone who's a fan of this shit to see him do one right thing. Right. And, and I think he would get support behind that. And that's like why it's such a missed opportunity. If you're like a narrative guy or something like, ah, what a story that could have been, but he'll never take the Rudy ending. Ever. And Rob, Rob Saul, who's like, I'm, I'm afraid of these people. If he showed <laughs> up and had a good, like just, you know, drank with these guys, the narrative today would be, you know what? Rob Saul is actually a nice guy. And then, we'd be able to make fun of the people who are like, you know what? I actually kind of like Rob Saul's show because yep. we would know they're lying, but that like people are very easy to influence. Like Tom Myers, after doing my show, I just liked him more. You know, <laughs> he kissed my ass a little bit and I was like, Hey, maybe this guy ain't so bad. It, it's honestly why I appreciate the Joey C uh, level of broadcasting. Just drive to everyone's house, meet them in person, and then they won't troll you anymore. Well, that I don't, <laughs> that I don't advocate it's, for. It's, it's that amazing. I think is a terrible. It just idea. shows up on your doorstep, and you're like, okay, I'll stop trolling you. <laughs> I, I don't condone that. But if like that's what I mean is if Rob Shaw, Rob Saul showed up to this event and wasn't an asshole. Like people would be fine. You don't have to be afraid of everyone. But in real, Joey has showed up to these events and people who were trolling him have changed because he showed up. You meet him. Exactly. He's, it's a human being. Ah, oh, shit. I won't troll him as much anymore. It does happen. Yeah. Um, so let's see. You, you said he described himself as the villain of the Dabbleverse, Rob Saul? Dabbleverse villain, yes. yes. He's, he's leaning into it. Let's see what the Joker is up to this week. <laughs> he does laugh like the Joker. God damn, <laughs> you just nailed it. Do it for the cause, Mr. Saul. Yes. We do it for the cause. Oh, I, I, I got to give you that. When you, when you, uh, journalistic you integrity. There's, there's a man on the phone right here who's going to stand by him. Let's just bother a civilian. Hey, how's it going? How are you? You're dressed very, very nice today. How oh, come? very good. Thank you. I'm talking to my father right now. Who's this? Uh, this is Rob Saul of the Rob Saul program. Oh, God internet. bless you, Rob Saul. How are you doing? Happy birthday. Good. I, you, yeah. Happy birthday, Rob Saul. Well, are you a big Rob Saul fan? I mean, uh, I, I'm not. I, I, I can't say I'm entirely familiar. However, you do look familiar. <laughs> Ouch. Are you a big Rob Saul fan? What a humiliating question. Joe uh, Rogan shouldn't ask that. <laughs> Never mind Rob Saul. 
<laughs> the Rock shouldn't ask that. No one should ask that. You a big Rob Saul fan? <laughs> no. That's something a villain would ask, though. It's Am I a leading. fan of a bartender in fucking Maryland or wherever he's from? No, <laughs> not a, particularly. With a, with a giant green screen. Mike, when I say a giant green screen, this man has a green screen the size of his whole room. You oh, do not have an SSL board in your room, asshole. No one believes that. That's what really bothers me about this man. He has thousands of dollars of analog gear behind him, and he couldn't name one thing. Uh, uh, I think, that's just my pet peeve about think him. Think through WATP. Yeah, they, they they make fun of me a lot on there. Oh, well, God bless you. Sterling <laughs> John's co-host. Oh, that's right. Yes. Okay, I remember you. You're the new DG. <laughs> the new- hey, oh. <laughs> this guy is killing whoever he is. <laughs> Get this guy a contract and a green screen. A stat. God, DG. The worst. DG's uh, the worst, yeah. Now I am. I am. Uh, now, now I am Rob, a- if, I, if I may translate. Hold on. If I may translate, Rob. <laughs> this man is saying... DG is the worst. You are an even less original version of DG. <laughs> what, Rob? What did you think would would happen? What would the if you just want to go up to people and get their opinion on you, and you are the villain of the Dabbleverse? What did you think would happen? You're not even heckling these people. You don't have mean comments for them. You're just like, hey, do you like me? And they're like, not really. And you're like, okay. What are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you wearing? I'm America's sweetheart, sir. Oh, well, God bless you. This is just uh, a nice guy. And these, by the way, he's... are the people. Um, every minifan. You know, the, the, a theme I've noticed with fan bases that have a certain opinion uh, or, or people have a certain opinion about them. I've noticed this at Minifan events. I've noticed it at Skankfest. I have not been to a, a WATP event or anything, but I'm getting the same vibe from this man where I, you can see, have an opinion about, oh, they're, they're evil. They're mean online, so they must be terrible people. When you meet them, they're the sweetest groups of people you could ever imagine. <laughs> you know, like I've met Minifans that I'm sure have tweeted horrible shit to me. They're all sweet as pie. <laughs> they couldn't be nicer. They're just people that have fun online, and I might not always take it well. But, like, in their minds, they're having fun. And that's what these people are doing at DabbleCon. And Rob Saul shows up and is like, Ah, oh, what are you, a bum? And they're like, hey, I, you you stink. And Rob's like, ah, okay, I'll get out of your hair. <laughs> He's a very, very uh, placid villain, I gotta say. Yes, yeah. And, like, look, this guy is just handling it. He's like, oh, yeah, no, I don't particularly like you, but uh, God bless you. I, I hope you do well. We, we all remember when uh, Batman was fighting the Joker, and then the Joker was just like, oh, you know, I just, okay, I'll, I'll just move on to the next oh, one. Oh, <laughs> I guess I'm a lo- I guess no one knows who I am. Sorry. Sorry for bothering you, Batman. Yeah, I guess I'm no Riddler. <laughs> uh, hit me up uh, to, to give an acceptance speech. <laughs> Rob Stroll Army! Yeah, you titled, What's the Point of This? <laughs> that could be this yeah, whole thing. Yeah, like, what, what is this venture he's doing here? Like, what, why... Why are you there, Rob? I'd be, I'd be curious to know what he, if he honestly said, and this is where like these guys can never be honest or self-deprecating. If Rob Saul was like, you know what? I went into it half cocked. I had no plan and it completely failed. But Rob will be like, no, I exposed what losers these people, they're all losers. And these losers had an event and I dedicated my life to ruining it. That's how you know they, and only they, <laughs> are losers. I sent my top dog Grundle out there to expose him. That's it, like, again, and it goes back to what Kevin Brennan was doing. Like, make fun of it, shit on it, whatever. By all means, have fun. But when you're, like, angry, and you're like, these people are losers, it really sounds like you're jealous you're not there. You're jealous that you weren't invited. Even you heard Rob say there, he's like, uh, did I get nominated for a Dabby? They didn't ask me for an acceptance speech. It's like, no, <laughs> no one thought of you, Rob. No one gave a fuck about you. No, but you can satirically ask for an award. We have established that at the beginning of this show. You can. <laughs> Don't super chat me, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're listening. Uh, well, you know, kind of. <laughs> Good. Never, the Loud dro- and clear. <laughs> YouTube's going to have to have a conversation with you because the drop off. They're going to be like, what happened? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about, fella. All right. Well, uh, <laughs> Rob that happened. Uh, that happened. 
Uh, yeah, he does. He he's a, he likes you too. He's one of yeah, your one of one of the few. You know, oh, yeah, hold on. So, so the guy yelled Rob Saul Army, and Jimmy Grindle is like, "This guy likes you." So that's a <laughs> hey. That's a that's a win for the Saul Meister. Uh, yeah, you got one, Rob. But hold you on, got one. So handsome and uh, uh, debonair. Fucking like that guy. <laughs> he just came back to clarify. <laughs> I- <laughs> He's like, hey, listen, I have a, re- you don't know my name, but I, I have a, a standard to uphold. I can't have you thinking that I like Rob Saul. I want to be very clear. I, I, have, a piece I, of shit. I have children who may see this. I, do not like that. I don't want to get fired from my job, for God's sake. <laughs> yes. No. Was yeah, was I on the show with Chris Hansen? Yes. But I do not want this on the air. No. If I had to choose <laughs> reputation maker, take this one down. Leave off the Hansen one. <laughs> He says you are something special. Oh, uh, okay. Tell him that he's a big fat pig. But uh <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice, Rob. Oh, hey, got him. Big <laughs> win for Saul. Thousand miles away, give him a terrible insult. You got him. <laughs> hey, you're fat. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Rob looks like a giant keg. <laughs> look, look at this guy. Oh, you can't see him. But blind Mike, he looks like a keg with a head. You know, but it completely deflates the entire insult when a moment ago you were like, hey, we got a member of the Saul army. <laughs> and, oh, he doesn't like me? Well, well, he's fat. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people going AWOL from that army. I got to say, Mike. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> and he definitely uh, heard me. He wants an in-person super chat. Yeah, I'm not giving Rob Saul money. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> like, what What did you accomplish here, Rob? I'll did tell you sh- what they accomplished. The roast of Rob Saul. <laughs> That's what they accomplished. <laughs> you just showed people don't like you on your own <laughs> show? Nicely done. Uh, this is why I would never do this. It'd be a fuck act right, fuck act right, fuck act right. Well, right what are you but, doing, but that's self awareness that you have. If the and maybe they wouldn't. <laughs> maybe people would be like, "Hey, I like Hack Ride," or "I like Casey Day," because they're very different guys. Yes. Um. But like, you have the self awareness to be. I wouldn't do this, and I think a majority of people there either <laughs> like or don't mind me. Everyone loves you, and you would do that's amazing. <laughs> and he's like, "No, do it here, Grindel, get out there." But I. I wouldn't have the balls to be like, so I guess you got to give Rob Saul credit for that. I wouldn't be like, hey, do you like Blind Mike? <laughs> <laughs> and they'd probably say yes. But what is Rob Saul doing here? Like, the only plan he had was to be like, hey, do you like me? Yeah, you know, like, this is an important thing. Like, uh, again, I always mention the Catalano, Joey C. It's very important to know your status with everyone at all times. <laughs> I need to know if everyone likes me or doesn't at all times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've i definitely had some of that, and you have to work on it. It's a personality flaw that you need to work <laughs> on, Rob, you know? Yes. Oh, thank God I was born when I was born. I could give a fuck about any of you. Was, uh, was that it? <laughs> Was that it? Uh, oh, we, there's there's more Saul. <laughs> there's like ten more seconds <laughs> of the army. Ten more seconds of the army. <laughs> OJ wants to know if you have more than four people watching. <laughs> hey, OJ, my man. <laughs> Hold on. Watch of- this. Watch this response. Watch how he owns OJ here. <laughs> a hundred. We have seventy six. I know it's not uh, OJ numbers, but listen, we're doing it, buddy. We're doing it. Right. <laughs> Do we have four viewers? Try <laughs> seventy. We're doing it. <laughs> you do very good numbers. All right, that's all. That's all for this one. I get like, and and Rob, no one would be insulting you if you didn't try to like ruin their day by having someone stick a microphone in their face and go, <laughs> "What are you doing here?" I don't know. Enjoying my event. <laughs>